What we call yoga today is just a small part of Hatha Yoga, involving asana, pranayam, and mudra. Many people say yoga asana is not yoga at all. It's all new philosophers who talk on easy chair, sitting and giving talks. But in olden days, in olden days, it was not so. Everybody were made to do asanas, which all the historical background will give you the that it was compulsory for everyone. Even out of the subject, I can say the children were given taught upanayanam at the age of five and or seven. So even at the age of five and seven, when they take the sankalpa, they say asana pranayama. That means take a correct position and do pranayama in order to do the japa of the gayatri. That means asana and pranayama were there from time immemorial without any deviation or division, whether they follow a karmic path or a ganic path or a yogic path or a bhakti path. So asana and pranayama was compulsory. Asana, pranayama, I mean, everything is there. Even today when they do the puja, the priest says asana, pranayama. So it has become now a literary word, but not actual. But in those days, they were actual. They had to do it. Asana is a steady state of the body, like a statue. Even the slightest movement should not be there. The breath becomes subtle, as if it has stopped completely. When the state becomes effortless and blissful, then the asana is said to be perfect. With the perfected asana, the person is ready to transcend the physical body and to awaken the powers of consciousness. This was the first step of the Indians to acquire knowledge. In this steady state of mind, Prakriti, or nature, reveals her knowledge. This knowledge of nature through yoga is far deeper than what modern science has achieved. The scene we are observing through our senses is not nature by itself. The senses themselves are an inherent part of nature. But equally, the wandering mind, which is beyond the senses, is also nature. The intellect, which is beyond the wandering mind, is also nature. And beyond the intellect, there is Ankar, an entity that is self-conscious. That too is nature. And prime nature and consciousness or Purusha are far beyond all of this. The knowledge of consciousness can be realized through the knowledge of nature. Nature is the inspiration for the arts and aesthetics. Nature, knowledge and the arts together brought a qualitative transformation in the life experiences of Indians. They have been the force behind Indian culture. Indian culture can be understood within this triangle. The highest point of life is nature. Nature has been the guru of all the arts and knowledge. When the Supreme Consciousness descended into the natural body, people saw him. Sri Krishna said, See me in the divine glories of nature. Dekhori Sakhi, Neel Kamal Dal Sham. Dear friend, see Krishna among the blue lotuses. This is not a poetic metaphor. It is an expression of the realization of Krishna consciousness in nature. Indian art embraces knowledge, and knowledge finds its expression in the arts. According to yoga, the fundamental purpose of nature is to exhibit itself. For exhibition, Nature takes beautiful forms. 
Is there a formula or calculation behind its beauty? These are the numbers of the Fibonacci series. But before Fibonacci, Jain Acharya Hemachandra had formulated them. Before him, it was Gopal. And even before him, Nirahank. And long before them, the sage Pingal chronicled this rhythmic pattern in his collection of the ancient Chandashastra, a treatise on poetic meters. The interesting thing about these serial numbers is that when two consecutive numbers are added, the next number is obtained. Another characteristic is that when you divide a line in such a way, whether the total length is divided by the longer segment or the longer segment by the shorter one, the same value is achieved. This value is known as the golden ratio. The ratio of numbers in this series is very close to the golden ratio. Amazingly, this series and this ratio are seen in most of the beautiful creations of nature. The number of petals in a flower or the number of circles in a sunflower, all beautiful creations show this pattern. We do not know whether the artists knew this, but in the most beautiful man-made creations, this ratio is seen. Therefore, it is called the golden ratio of beauty. The same ratio is seen in the long and short beats of music, which makes it melodious. The rhythmic cycle of musical beats, known as Tal, follow this number series. When the voice or mantra is contained in a meter that combines the lagu and guru syllables and matras, it is called chanda, or poetic versification. Chandas are the definite number of cycles of long and short meters. But the word meter is only a limited meaning of chanda. Through their yogic power, the ancient rishis saw the universe as rhythmic motion and pulsation. They realized that the material universe is pulsating rhythmically, as in a chanda. They called both the matter and the voice, vak. The universe is bound by chanda. Therefore, knowledge of the universe, the Vedas, are also bound by chanda. One of the meanings of chanda is protective shield. The Chandas have protectively shielded Vedic knowledge from time immemorial. It is the protection by Chanda and the metered recitation of the vast Vedic literature that has ensured its purity and continuity till today. In this way, the arts, music and poetry ensured the continuity of Indian knowledge. The arts helped the Indian mind experience the ultimate reality. Creation is rhythmic, so is its dissolution. Both are chanda bound. The universe is ever in motion in the form of spirals of chandas. These shells were found in Dholavira city of the Harappa civilization. What was seen after opening them? A miraculous formula of creativity, beauty, and dissolution. Jatak Parivartan ka sambandh hai, usko bhi hum Bhartiya drishti se samajh le. Swayam Parivartan shabd hi ye bata raha hai, pari charo or se vartan hona. Arthat, golakar, vartulakar, rekhakar nahi. ये वर्तुलाकार जीवन का स्वरूप शायद उस पक्षी को अच्छी तरह मालूम है जो अपना घोंसला भी वर्तुलाकार बनाता है उस पक्षी के अंदर एक अंतर दृष्टि है कि अंडे को भी गोल होना है इसलिए घोंसले को भी गोल होना है और इसलिए विकास का क्रम गोल ही है वर्तुलाकार ही है लेकिन सर्कुलर होने के साथ साथ प्रकृति में कभी भी पुनरावृत्ति नहीं होती इसलिए सर्कुलर का ये मतलब नहीं है कि जैसा था वैसा का वैसा दोबारा हो जाएगा वो गोलाकार होते हुए भी शंखाकार आगे बढ़ता है 
ये भी एक गोला है लेकिन अगला भी एक गोला है लेकिन ऊंचाई बढ़ गई है उसकी स्पायरल गति के अंदर ह्रास भी शामिल है और विकास भी शामिल है ये परिवर्तन का स्वरूप भारतीय चिंतन का जिसके लिए हमारे यहाँ चक्र शब्द का प्रयोग हुआ तो हमारे ऋषियों ने उसको इतना महत्व दिया कि उन्होंने बहुत सारी चीज़ों के साथ चक्र शब्द काल चक्र बोलने लगे हम संसार चक्र बोलने लगे It was not faith in God or superstition, but a direct observation of nature through which the Vedics had the experience of the infinite and the Buddhists of Shunya. The infinite or Shunya, the one who experiences either of them, becomes a yogi and attains samadhi. Does it matter whether Pythagoras learned his theorem from the Indians or not? It matters because when the same knowledge comes back to India, it is devoid of its spirituality. Modern medical science has had significant contributions from ancient India. The basic procedure of rhinoplasty of the ancient Indians is the same as performed today. The Sushrut Sanhita describes more than 100 surgical instruments but today the role of dhyana and emotions have no place in medical science To make Ayurveda modern scientists have separated it from its holistic philosophy of the human body The human body as defined by yoga and sankhya the human body defined by the Upanishads the human body defined by the gita the body defined by ayurveda and the puranas all are the same and all this is the philosophy of the human body of the hindus hindus consider medicinal plants as conscious entities earlier ayurvedic physicians would request the medicinal plant to cure the patient They believe the plant would then compassionately infuse positive energy in its parts. But for modern men, plants are objects of consumption. The same attitude exists towards knowledge. The shastra of any knowledge is not a book for consumption. It is a living flow of traditional learning. This is the shastra, Charak Sanhita. Charak means wandering ascetic. The long tradition of wandering Hindu ascetics who were also physicians began from the time of the Atharva Veda. Ayurveda is a sub-veda of the Vedas. In Veda, food grain is considered Brahma, the universal consciousness through which our own consciousness is sustained. Therefore in India, while inviting people for meals, it is not to eat a meal but to accept the meal. In Rajasthan, while inviting people for meals they say bhojan arogyasa meaning please accept food for arogya that is for well being arogyasa khana khao ye nahi kehte khana hamare yahan varjit hai khana shabd ka prayog hai ye bahut gehra vigyan hai jo log ne arjit kiya apne anubhavon se na to sabzi kaati jati hai sabzi sudhari jati hai ab wahan insa nahi hai अगर और आगे बढ़ करके कहूँ तो कोई ये नहीं कहेगा कि आप खाओ सा तो खाना जो है वो दरअसल भक्षण की कैटेगरी में आता है और हम भक्षी नहीं थे हम भोक्ता नहीं थे हम उपभोक्ता थे ये हम जानते हैं इतना ही भोजन करना है जिससे हम निरोग रहें और आरोग्य की प्राप्ति करें आरोग्य की साधना पहली आ, पहली दरअसल जरूरत थी हमारी हम भोजन चटकारे लेके नहीं खाते थे हम भोजन आरोग्य निरोग होने के लिए करते थे हम कैलोरीज नहीं गिनते थे लेकिन हम ये देखते थे कि क्या चीज़ हमारे लिए पौष्टिक है क्या चीज़ तृप्ति देती है बहुत सारी चीज़ें सेवन की जाती थी अभी सेवन भी दवा का शब्द है तो खाने की चीज़ें भी सेवन की जाती थी और विज्ञान इतना प्रबल था 
लोग तक पहुंचा हुआ था जड़ों में कि हम जानते थे कि क्या चीज गर्म है किसकी तासीर गर्म है और किसकी तासीर ठंडी है आज कोई नहीं जानता आज ठंडा क्या है गर्म क्या है ये कोई बताता नहीं है और इस विज्ञान से वंचित रखा गया है पिछले सत्तर अस्सी सौ सालों से जब से बल्कि दो सौ सालों से According to the holistic life view of the Hindus all plants and humans are illumined by one consciousness They are not separate from each other they are interdependent they nurture and complement each other Veda says a body is a mini cosmos therefore by meditating on the body one can acquire the knowledge of the cosmos Now we are left with the sutras of Patanjali. The experiential continuities are long lost. Indian knowledge was never just speculation or arrived at by fluke. It was achieved by a different method of discovery which needs to be rediscovered. In 1791, a British scholar visited India. He wrote that to learn Indian knowledge systems one must first understand the indian mind hindus accept the existence of atma as eternal and unalterable it's only after considering their view can we understand their sciences there is a tripartite arrangement of indian knowledge logic ethics and knowledge of nature today the logical language of sanskrit is not used for logic in science dharma is misunderstood as religion and nature is studied with a reductionist world view and therefore has become a consumerist commodity it is hard to imagine how the age of the earth was calculated by ancient indians it was in fact the result of a sophisticated system of knowledge in the cosmos What is being seen here is not actually happening there. We are observing light which they emitted millions of years ago. The light of cosmic events that occurred millions of years ago is reaching us today. Our sensory perception can never know the real present of the universe. But in yoga, the state of consciousness is said to be independent of time. It is through this state of consciousness that the ancient Indians comprehended the vast expanse of time in the universe. Vishnu Dev Sri Shwetavana Kalpay Bhai Vasvatamana Mantare Ashtavyamsha Namane Kali Yuge Kali This recitation gives a glimpse of that vast expanse. The scientific age of Earth is one day of Brahma. That one day of Brahma is further divided into many kalpas, manavantaras, and yugas today we are living in the kali yuga which falls in the vaivatsa manvantar of the shweta varakalpa of the second half of brahma's day this indian counting of time is the most extensive in the world hum to jab bhi koi karya shuru karte the to hum seedhe ke seedhe apne ko pure brahmand se jodte the om vishnu 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 adya parmatma ne पुराण पुरुषोत्तमे हाँ अमुक मासे अमुक पक्षे अमुक तिथे भारतवर्षे समझ अमुक प्रांत अमुक जनपदे गौतम गोत्रोत्पन्नोहम राजेंद्र मिश्र शर्माहम निज कल्याण हृदय ये तेत ते करोमि हम पूरा का पूरा अपने को जोड़ लेते थे कि कौन ब्रह्मांड का कौन अंश चल रहा है कौन मनवंतर चल रहा है कौन युग चल रहा है उसमें कौन सा ये कलयुग है अट्ठाईसवें कलयुग का कौन सा चरण है फिर देश का कौन हिस्सा है और उस देश का हिस्सा जो है किस तीर्थ से आविष्टित है कौन यहाँ की पवित्र नदी है कौन महीना है कौन पक्ष है कौन सप्ताह है कौन दिन है और आज के दिन नवग्रहों की स्थिति क्या है घड़ी कैसा है पल कैसा है करण कैसा है पंचांग की स्थिति कैसी है और उससे जब हमारा आइडेंटिफिकेशन हो जाता था हम पूरा ब्रह्मांडमय हो जाते थे 
तब हम अपनी बात कहते थे कि अब मैं अपने कल्याण के लिए अपनी माँ के जो है कल्याण के लिए पिता के कल्याण के लिए या इसके लिए मैं ये कार्य करने जा रहा हूँ ये हमारा साक्ष्य होता था इसका तो दुनिया में किसी को ज्ञान ही नहीं It is not surprising that the ancient Indians knew the concept of time dilation. Thousands of years later, in the 20th century, Einstein introduced this concept of time dilation in his theory of relativity. But stories were written thousands of years ago in India which describe the phenomenon of time dilation. Here was a city called Kushastali. the capital of king kukudumi his daughter revathi was so beautiful and cultured that several proposals for her confused the king who should he marry her to in those days some humans possessed the power to go to higher worlds like brahmalok king kukudumi traveled with his daughter to brahmalok to meet brahma ji brahmalok was reverberating with celestial music and dance Brahma ji was enjoying the performance blissfully. The king had to wait until the show was over. The king then told him of his dilemma. Brahma ji smiled and said, "The men you have in mind for your daughter are all dead now. Not only them, but even their grandchildren and generations are all long gone. Time flows at a different speed on earth. Within this time, 27 chaturyugas have passed on earth now balram brother of krishna lives there get revathi married to him when the king returned to earth he found the city of dwarka in place of kushastali the place he had left what seemed to him a little while ago had changed completely and become a new landscape several cycles of human evolution had elapsed this was the time of the mahabharat The writer of the Mahabharat, Maharishi Vyas, describes several events of the Mahabharat through the position of stars and constellations. Various inscriptions in the Purans, the Raj Tarangani, and other texts mention the dates of the Mahabharat war. This 1,400-year-old rock edict says that this Jain temple was made by King Ravi Kirti 3,735 years. After the Mahabharat War, this period is also the beginning of Yudhishthir Samvat, a calendar still used in India. Aryabhatta has given the date of the Mahabharat War as 18th February, 3102 BC. The debate on the date of the Mahabharat War will continue. but the war certainly commenced with the blowing of thousands of giant conch shells the warriors had filled their chests to blow like roaring thunder the atmosphere reverberated with the all powerful sound and with this came the end of an epoch in a cycle of time these spirals of a conch shell signify the cycles of time the earth is generating similar spirals of time she never returns to the same path again sitting in the lap of mother earth we are continuously navigating new spirals every moment in infinite space a new path a novel creation is the reality of time time does not travel in a linear fashion as taught in history today It is a circular spiral. In every time cycle, a new Ramayana and Mahabharat transpire. It is called Itihas in India. The time cycle of sansara is the cause of suffering. Why did this come into existence? Desire was the cause. Universal consciousness desired to create sansara, the world. I from one become many. The creative desire form of universal consciousness is brahma brahma ran after his desire to create sansara the non dual form of blissful consciousness is adiyogi shiva 
Shiva wanted to kill Brahma the creator with an arrow to stop the creation of Sansara. But the process of creation began before the arrow could hit him. It missed its target by one moment. The arrow of time missed by a moment and time was born. The pulsation of that primordial event still resonates in our consciousness. History is always present in our spiritual being. We are continuously generating desire. By seeding it with our labor, we are creating sansara. The root cause of suffering is both desire and sansara. But in creation, there is also rasa, the emotive feelings of life. Creation has followed the blissful tal and rhythms of Shiva. The Rig Veda says Rudra, the fierce form of Shiva, is Agni or fire. Shiva had earlier wanted to kill Brahma, the creator. But since the creation had already begun, Shiva's Rudra form transformed into Agni to protect Sansara. Agni is the energy of Sansara. Because of Agni, there is motion, there is existence, there is Bhog, Yog and Rasa. In the end, Agni engulfs all. In dissolution, the Sansara partakes in the Rasa of the Tandav dance of Adi Yogi Shiva. In the end, all merges into the non-dual Adiyogi. The complete dissolution is nothing but his Samadhi. Ganga Taranga Ramani Jata Kalapam Gauri Nidantar Vibhushita Bhaam Bhagam Shiva in Samadhi has been the personification of yoga for thousands of years. All the symbols shown here represent the philosophy of yoga. Shiva is our pure detached consciousness. And this is the primal nature of Sankhya the philosophy of yoga. This image of Adiyogi blissfully living in the Himalayan caves may not inspire the modern man. Perhaps this image will inspire him more. The physical notion of health has made us ignorant about the rasa of self-realization. Today, the meaning of Anand is material pleasure. America is a land of material pleasure. India was also once the land of a pleasurable life. Perhaps ancient India had achieved sensory pleasure far greater than in America. The country that looks poor today was once the richest land of the world. Even Western scholars came to this conclusion of India's material affluence on the basis of economic parameters. But for Indians, Purusharth, meaningful endeavors, was the goal of human pursuit, not material affluence. When Purusharth is complete, Vairagya, a detachment from the world, emerges from within. This Vairagya is the greatest wealth. In intense Vairagya, realization of self is attained, and that is yoga. It is the supreme power. With this power of yoga, India never allowed the essence of her core to diminish, even in the worst of times. But countless countries in the world have disappeared in the whirlwind of time. Sadhan Dham Moksha Kar Dwara Pahin Jai Par Lok Sana Sadhan Dham Moksha Kar Dwara Pahin Jai Par Lok Sana